This we've got six things you should know. And first up on our list, as we mentioned before, today is the first day of spring, but many Americans have already started spring cleaning. Thousands of pack rats are finding their way through the clutter with a new method popularized by a show on Netflix. You might be surprised to see how simple how a simple approach can lead to dramatic results. Liz McLaughlin has more. That doesn't make me happy anymore. A decluttering craze is sweeping through closets across the U.S. It actually changed my life. Leading to dramatic purges. Oh, bags and bags. I had maybe two storage units. Inspired by the KonMari method. Hello, I'm Maria Kondo. Gaining popularity thanks to the Netflix series Tidying Up with Marie Kondo. Let's start tidying. The process starts with clothes. You take every single piece everything you own and go one by one. Decide what to toss by asking one simple question. Does it spark joy? If it doesn't bring happiness, then get it out. I went through my own closet and I have bags of stuff that I don't want, some of which I'm embarrassed to say still has the tags on it. But your trash can be another person's treasure, and that's a win-win for consignment stores and your wallet. People have just been really inspired by it. KonMari converts are generating an early influx of inventory to resale shops. Spring cleaning started a lot sooner this year. We've had people bringing in really amazing pieces that we might not have seen otherwise without the show. Thrift chain Buffalo Exchange offers buy or trade options for unwanted items. Hold hard cash. <laughs> a helpful incentive to let go. Maybe you can get some cash for it. Maybe you can trade it in for something new that will spark joy that you want to wear. But be mindful of new purchases. Oh, I definitely will buy more clothes. And I already have. That could let clutter creep back into your closet. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News. And our number two today, shoppers can now purchase clothes, shoes, cosmetics, and more on Instagram. The social network site has officially launched in-app purchases. Shoppers in the U.S. can buy items from more than 20 brands on Instagram. If you see a product you want, you can now buy it straight from your timeline. Just look for the checkout on Instagram option when you're ready to make your purchase. And number three on our list for the fifth year in a row, Susan G. Komen is teaming up with local media to dance for the cure and NBC 6's very own Delano Henry. Will be showing off his dance moves in this year's competition. He only has one month to prepare a dance routine for the big show in April. Delano says he is excited to take part in the event and wants to honor his late grandmother. My grandmother, she uh, battled breast cancer and she beat it, but you know she ended up losing her life a few years later to another form of cancer. But it, it's just a great time to honor her. I feel like my chances are—I don't want to seem cocky, but you know, your boy got some moves. Your boy got some moves. <laughs> The event is April 26th at the Horseshoe River Dome. Delano isn't just competing on stage. The dancers are also fighting to see who can raise the most money for the charity. To, don to donate, just click the link on our website, arthletexhomepage.com. And our number four is a central Arkansas parent who's warning others after she says her son was jumped and robbed after meeting up with girls he, he and his friend met on Snapchat. The family believes it was a setup from the start to lure in unsuspecting and trusting teens. Rebecca Jeffrey tells us what happened and what parents need to be aware of. It's the sound teens hear most from their phone, but a friendship created on Snapchat turned an innocent meetup into a robbery setup. You wouldn't think that a teenager would even have the mindset of setting up something so cruel. Stacy Price woke up to a call Friday night from North Little Rock Police saying her son and his friend were victims of a crime and it all started with some girls. They met on Snapchat and I guess they had been communicating, you know, talking and wanting to meet. The boys met up with the girls outside a dark house here on Latona Lane. The boys say they talked to the girls for a few minutes. One girl was even putting her Snapchat information into one of the boys phones when everything changed. My son said he got blindsided and someone punched him in the jaw. They say several boys came out of nowhere, demanded their valuables and tried to steal the boy's car. Both victims got away, one without his phone, the other without $160. He's really shooken up. He is really traumatized by this. While Price describes her son as quiet, shy and responsible. After this close call, she's not taking any chances. I just purchased him a new phone, so I'm putting an app on his phone and it will tell me his location at all times. Something she'll be preaching to others. Parents need to know, you know, to be aware of situations like this. As she hopes justice for her son is served in a snap. 
And our number five today is National Kick Butts Day, but it's not about beating anyone up. It's a day for smokers to kick cigarettes to the curb and for non-smokers to engage in anti-smoking activism. Kick Butts Day. Kick Butts Day was first held in 1996 and it was organized by the Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids. The best way to celebrate is by quitting smoking if you do, but if you don't, you can still raise awareness about the health dangers of smoking, especially with kids. And last but not least on our list is an adult adaptive dance program in Wisconsin that is encouraging people with Down syndrome to get out and to get out their dancing shoes. And volunteers say it's a class unlike anything else. NBC's Megan Ristod visited Gigi's Playhouse. And we bent and we stretch. Well, Gigi's Playhouse is a Down syndrome achievement center, and we offer educational, therapeutic, and career development programs for people with Down syndrome of all ages. I'm reach, 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 reach a little further. Abigail and her crew from yeah, Magnum again, Opus reach, reach, are um, volunteers, so they come here and give their talents and their knowledge for our participants absolutely free of charge, and this is an amazing, amazing opportunity, and we're very grateful to have them here. Well, I'm the founder and director of Magnum Opus Ballet, so we're a new ballet company in town and we really want to connect with the community and we love the idea of really connecting Gigi's and Magnum Opus doing an adaptive dance program. Heels up, down, up, down. That's right, Zach. It's so much more um, than about dance. Yes, dance is this awesome joy and it's this gift that we have, but I think it's more about how do we enhance um, this people group in their life as a whole. The passion that I have for this particular people group really stems from my family. My sister has Down syndrome, so you really view life in a very different way. I saw her take dance classes as a kid and how that really affected her everyday life. I mean, she just really came to life when she started dancing. We really want to affect people throughout the rest of their life and that affecting their muscle tone, their mobility, um, their balance point. Bend and stretch. Good, now other arms, switch arms. I've seen people participate in dance who usually are shy and don't want to move as much and now they just absolutely love it. And I think it's been a really great just new friendship that has started so it's been a joy to be here. Yeah. Yeah, come on! Well don't go anywhere we're empowering women after the break. <laughs>